just what kind of acne is cell acid good for? And must I have cell acid in my routine? Uh, okay, fine, <laughs> fine, fine. fine. Um, <clears throat> okay. The best way we felt like we could answer this was to just go through some testing. Because ultimately, that can give us an idea of, you know, what kind of subjects, what's the best outcome for these subjects. And you'll see why. So we're going to start off with a clinical that was done by Obaji. This was an old clinical, but I think it is quite insightful. What they wanted to do was see if their routine, the Obaji routine, could compete with a BPO antibiotic combination. Now, the study is a nice size. It's 139 subjects. But the subject pool and the types that they're looking for, I think, are pretty interesting. So um, the subjects that they tested were anywhere between the ages of 12 to 45. That well, consent form must be crazy. <laughs> yes, but so, so, so young. They are looking for anybody with mild to moderate facial acne. And for those of you wondering, is my acne mild? Is my acne moderate? Let me tell you. So what that equates to is 10 to 100 non-inflammatory lesions, 17 to 60 inflammatory lesions, and mm. less than or equal to two nodulocystic lesions. It's like cystic acne. And if you're wondering, what does that then mean? I got you there too, because non-inflammatory lesions are your comedones. So this can be anything from a whitehead to a blackhead. They're generally just the bumps. But inflammatory lesions are simply the bumps, but they are red and tender. Okay, so hopefully there's that difference there. And then finally, if you're wondering what cystic acne is, these are your deeper fluid-filled lesions. These feel like they're not visibly at the surface. They feel like they're like much deeper. And for anyone that has cystic acne, they'll know. You'll, you'll just know. It just feels like it will never come to the surface. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what mild to moderate facial acne means. If you're wondering, uh, does that mean I have to count my acne? I will tell you that, you know, in terms of this is where you can consider going to a derm because that's, that's what, in fact, they do to keep track of how acne is improving over time. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the best way is just generally keep account of how, where your breakouts are, how many there are. Okay. So now you know, mild to moderate acne, 139 subjects, ages 12 to 45. Now the regimen. They had the regimen be used for 10 weeks. And this is why we think this clinical is interesting. The first regimen, Obagi's regimen, includes a 2% salicylic acid cleanser twice daily, okay, a 2% toner once daily, and a 5% BPO gel twice daily, okay? Mm -hmm. The second one uses a simple control cleanser with no active and a 1% clindamycin plus a 5% BPO gel that is used twice daily. Okay, so that is the two scenarios they're competing with. And so if the main difference here is the uh, is in the cell acid group, there's the 2% of the cleanser, the 2% of the toner, but no antibiotics. It's almost like mm -hmm. pitting it directly against the clindamycin. Pretty much. And I think the other thing I, I, I think it's important here is, yes, it's not only testing cell acid, but it's testing a lot of cell acid in conjunction with other actives, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think it's it's still there can be some takeaways here. Okay. Participants are given the same moisturizer, same sunscreen to use. So um, really the acne regimen is the only difference here. And we'll put the results up here. These are the results that they show the mean change from baseline for both inflammatory and non-inflammatory acne. And ultimately, they did see that there was a greater reduction in non-inflammatory lesion count um, with a 27% reduction by week two and a 40% reduction by week 10. Okay. And then in terms of inflammatory lesions, it was comparable between the two regimens. Mm -hmm. And the thing I think that's interesting here is that despite what you would consider to be a pretty or 
I would consider a heavier sal acid routine. Just note the reduction levels by week 10. They still only saw a 40% reduction. And I think the thing I wanted to show here was that this is in conjunction with BPO. So if you imagine what that would be like if it was solely sal acid, you, it, it clearly shows that you still need some of these main acne heavy hitters to really uh, have a significant effect for these mild to moderate acne breakouts. I was going still to with say, <laughs> I was wondering like a 40% reduction, is that it's significant and it will be visual, but is that what people, I feel like everyone wants, I, I don't think people will consider a 40% reduction, oh, my skin yes. has cleared up, you know? Yes, and I think that is, Exactly the point, Gloria. It's, mm -hmm. it's, and I'll show the before and after pictures that they did take. Um, they definitely, you can see they used Vizia photos here. There's clearly a marked improvement, but what's interesting is with acne, I think we're used to hearing like those clean and clear claims, those like 24 hour, you know, breakout like eliminators, you know, you, you're expected to this really quick turnaround time. And I think because of that, people don't realize or just forget that breakouts are not something that can just be eliminated in a couple weeks. Acne right. breakouts is a long, it's a long game here. You're, you're trying to improve with every breakout. Um, and so I think this is a really good realistic scenario of what acne improvements look like. So mm -hmm. hopefully that's helpful. Okay. And the other thing that I think um, Gloria would appreciate because sal acid is something that she and, and, Myself sometimes have this issue. It's like our skins don't always tolerate sal acid well. So they um, also performed a tolerability assessment. Um, and they looked at things that included erythema, dryness, peeling, burning and stinging, and itching. And I think we'll, put, we'll also share these results here. Um, you can see that. All right. So in terms of erythema, peeling, and dryness, both regimens were comparable. Um, mm -hmm. They all had some light pinkness that occurred on skin, um, which is like generally noticeable erythema, a slight roughness, slight peeling. That was all normal in week one. And you can see that all sort of levels out after that. In terms of burning, burning and stinging, the sal acid BPO regimen was significantly higher at all time points except for oh, wow. week 10. Um, wow. And that results in a light, warm, tingling sensation. Um, and I think, <laughs> yeah. And I think what's interesting here is to show how basically it takes about one to two weeks to start feeling like skin's really acclimating. So I thought that was kind of a nice... Um, example of onboarding I so actives. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like cell acid is so common and it's one of those like such whatever actives that people don't think of as a potential irritant of any sort mm -hmm. and I think a lot of brands straight up will position it as like a very mild miracle worker but I think cell acid is one of those ones I swear is very skin type dependent and mm -hmm. it doesn't mean like oh you have sensitive skin therefore you may I think it's like a type of person that your skin is either reactive to cell acid or it's not. Um, on me, it's drying. It can be very drying. Um, I use a specialist directly on my nose for my blackheads, and it's a perfect spot treat. It works really well, but I can't use it more than two days in a row, or else my nose area will start peeling, and I won't. I won't see it with even high levels of gly glycolic acid. So it's a very specific response to cell acid. Mm -hmm. And I have used cell acid toners before that end up making me kind of like this paper. It ended up making me feel just a little sensey in general. Like yeah. afterwards, if you use layer other stuff on it, it just feels like a little, just very mild tingling sensations, which I don't get from other ingredients. So cell acid, it's not your imagination if you're like, I don't know about this. I think my skin is flaking, but but they say cell acid is mild. It's milder than BPO, right? Well, it just kind of depends on your skin. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly that. And you'll see as we go through a couple other studies, like it's kind of similar in that sense. Um, there was another one that's done, and I cannot tell you why they did it this way, but another clinical study looked at um, testing 
basically a clindamycin uh, BPO. So it's 1% clindamycin, 5% BPO. Uh, they wanted to see what would happen if they added a three person, why three? I don't know, three percent <laughs> sal acid product. Um, so they split about 50 subjects into two groups. So one got the simply the clindamycin BPO product. The other group got the clindamycin BPO plus the three percent sal acid product. And um, for this group, uh, I just wanted to mention that the ages was between 18 to 35, a little bit more narrow. Similar, mild to moderate acne, so 10 to 50 inflammatory lesions, 10 to 100 non-inflammatory lesions, but no cystic acne here. And I thought that was interesting because cystic acne is very much like a next level scenario. Um, so maybe that might explain some of the results to me. This is where I was um, found it. A little bit surprising. So they had people use this combination twice daily for 12 weeks here. And I'll put the results up here. They did the same thing where they looked at non-inflammatory and inflammatory lesion counts. And you can see that they actually found a 94.7% re reduction in non-inflammatory lesions and a 93.2% reduction in inflammatory lesions. And I was like, what? that is starkly different than the last one we were talking about. <laughs> oh, that does feel like skin's almost clear, but I am mildly suspicious. <laughs> yeah, so it's wildly different here. I think for me, how I looked at this is I also, you know, in comparison, ultimately this is about sal, sal acid. They, it was significantly better than just BPO and clindamycin. Um, clindamycin, that combo alone, they saw 81% reduction in non-inflammatory. Uh, they only saw a 73% reduction in inflammatory. So, um, hopefully that gives you some numbers to compare to here, but overall those numbers are way higher than the previous study. <laughs> well, maybe it's a luck of the draw. Maybe it's a formula. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> they also looked at tolerability here. Um, I did want to mention that for both groups, the sal acid group, they actually got had 87.5% of them had experienced side effects, while 82.6% um, experienced side effects for simply the antibiotic and BPO group. If you look at the results, you will see that uh, the sal acid group experienced a much higher amount of dryness, mm. healing, mm. erythema, mm. and burning. So, again, as Gloria was saying, I know sal acid gets positioned at gentle, but again, concentration matters here. And at the 2% mark, we can clearly say that can be aggressive for some skin types. Yep. Yeah. I feel so right. dated. <laughs> <laughs> And I always feel like I, I, I understand that people who went through a lot of acne um, in their teenage years or whatnot, they're used to treating their skin a little bit more harshly. You know, you do the scrubs, you keep your skin super dry, and then you use the retinoids and, and whatnot. So comparatively, I feel like cell acid usually just flies under the radar. Mm -hmm. Like people just think that it can be bad. There's like a thousand other things that can be causing dryness. But also in terms of management, sal acid, especially if you're using a cocktail treatment, we'll get into that a little bit later too. It's just one of those things that, hey, if you're having a hard time reining everything in, consider just using a lower dose of sal acid and that can make a huge difference. Yeah, and that's just the perfect summary of these, you know, two clinicals. Um, first of all, very difficult to find simply 2% sal acid clinicals out there. Um, but I think these clinicals show that there's no way you're going to only use sal acid alone to treat yeah. acne. That we know. But the second thing is sal acid is also, can be helpful to a routine. Um, but just know that it may come with certain side effects and that's just something to keep in mind. And, you know, the issue with um, not having enough testing is it's possible that maybe at a lower percentage, who knows what kind of results you might see and it might fare better in terms of tolerability um, in the long term. So 
those are kind of all the feelings I had when trying to talk about sal acid and who it's good for, okay? Ultimately, mild to moderate acne, this is definitely worth your consideration. Just know um, amount, know the frequency. These people are using it twice a day uh, in a pretty aggressive routine. And then just know kind of, you know, manage your expectations and know that this is not going to be the one thing that's going to eliminate all of your breakouts. So I have a question for you. Go for it. I'm ready. Do you use sal acid in your routine? <laughs> um, so I use it. I, I do use our specialist on breakout days. And I will say post baby acne is different. Like I, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like my breakout scenario, my skin doesn't, I feel like my whole body is still trying to find normal. Um, so <laughs> I, know so I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what it wants. Um, I've actually felt like I've had more body acne than even face acne lately. Um, I do use it when I am actively trying to tackle breakouts, but if mm-hmm. I am not, that is not my preferred AHA. So that's, yeah, that's my feels. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that was helpful. That yeah. was a lot of data. I'm still mystified by why 3%. That almost seems like someone found a little baggie and was like, this is about 3%. We're going to test 3%. <laughs> I mean, maybe they looked at the th- the 2% realm and were like, maybe increase it higher? Yeah. 2% doesn't do anything. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So, 